Dumb user Win10 is an intentionally vulnerable Windows 10 64-bit virtual machine which we will be exploiting. This operating system is a bit more difficult to exploit than the others, because it's more modern and it has a lot of built-in security such as memory protection. A good bit of the security measures were disabled on this virtual machine to provide a proof-of-concept exploitation. Let's get started by importing. Double-click the OVA file. Click Import. Now let's just click Start, boot up our system. Once you're all booted up, we can go ahead and click Dumb User, and we're going to log in with the password of Dumb User. Same case as the username. And we're going to be prompted with a password expiration message, and we have to change our password, so change it to whatever you want. Press Enter, and click OK once your password is changed. Our first objective here is to get a reverse shell to access the dumb user account. Unfortunately, it's pretty difficult to directly exploit Windows 10 64-bit machines, so we'll be going with a scenario that requires social engineering and user intervention in order to gain our initial access. What we have here is a vulnerable version of FTP shell client installed. In order to exploit FTP shell client, the user needs to send a connection attempt to a malicious FTP server, which we will be setting up now. I'm going to be showing you how to exploit this with the existing Metasploit exploit module, which appears to be the most reliable, and also a standalone exploit, which is a collection of Python scripts. Switch over to your Kali Linux VM. If it's not on, then turn it on and pause the video until it's loaded. If you're already ready, then let's go over to our terminal and type in MSF console. We are now going to be setting up the Metasploit exploit module. Use Windows forward slash FTP forward slash FTP shell underscore CLI underscore BOF. Now set the L host to the IP address of your Kali Linux VM. In my case, it's the one you see on screen. And we are also going to set the SRV host to the same IP address. Otherwise, it'll default to something else that we don't want. Okay, now we're going to set the payload to Windows Meterpreter reverse TCP. Everything looks good. Type in run, hit enter. All right, make sure your IPs are correct. And now we have a FTP server ready to send a buffer overflow payload to whomever connects. Now let's go back to our Windows 10 machine. Double click on the FTP shell client shortcut. As you can see here, it's already populated with some information. I've already been trying it a couple times. And tried to automatically connect. So, what you want to do here is type in the IP address of your Kali Linux VM and click connect. Let's hop back over to Kali Linux and see what happened. All right, I got a interpreter session open. So if this doesn't work and it crashes for whatever reason, keep trying over and over until it works. So sometimes it didn't work for me when I was figuring this exploit out, but it seems to be pretty reliable for what it is, you know, sometimes you're not going to get it. You just if if it crashes and it does not work, you don't get your session, then just close out, double click the client again, put put your information in here, your IP address here, and then click click connect until it works. So that's that's the best you can do on this exploit. For me, it worked on the first time, luckily this time. So let's interact with our session. Good. Just type in git uid. 
Okay, as you can see here, we are logged in as dumb user. What we want to do is escalate privileges to administrator. So let's see if we can automatically do that by typing in git system. No, we cannot. That's to be expected. So let's check for insecurely configured services and see if we can escalate privileges manually, which is what I want to show you anyway. So for that, we're going to upload a very useful executable called access C H K. And I already have that in our downloads directory in the Kali Linux VM that is included with my course. So let's just use the upload command in Meterpreter to upload that file. Okay, so I've typed that in wrong. Hold up one second. Let me just go over here. Okay, so it's just right here in the downloads folder. Sorry about that. So we're just going to remove that folder. Here's where it is. Okay, it says access is denied. I don't like that very much. Let's figure out why it's doing this. So I figured out the reason that it didn't work. Let's print the working directory. We see we have FTP shell client as the directory and we do not have write access to it. So what we want to do is go back a couple directories here. All right, now we're in the C directory and we want to go to users and dumb user. We should have write access to our own user directory. I'm just going to background that and clear it. Okay. So now let's try our upload command again. There it is. Good. So we dropped it in our user directory and we can now use that file. Okay, so. Just gonna switch to a Windows shell and just type the word shell and hit enter. And we're going to run a command to see all services that we're able to modify. The goal here is to potentially swap out a legitimate service for a malicious one of our own creation. And I'll show you how to do that next, if we find a proper service that we can utilize. Okay, so nothing found with that. We're going to try another command to see if there are any weak permissions configured in any file from the C directory on. All right, quite a bit. And they're all in the PC protect directory. So I have my eyes on this executable here, securityservice.exe. Let's take a closer look at it. So we're going to use the sc command against security service. We're going to see the specifics about this command. It looks like it is running as local system. That's very good because it'll elevate our privileges if we can somehow execute a malicious binary in its place. And as we know from the access check 64.exe command, this does have weak permissions and we should be able to get that accomplished. Okay. We also know that it is auto start. So that means when we reboot the system, it's going to start up with the rest of the this applications here in the PC protect application. So let's just go ahead and run another command to further verify our findings here. 
I cackles. Yep, running his system. Very good. Now let's see if the service is running at this moment. So just task list or task list forward slash SVC. All right, it's running all the currently running services. Let's go up, try to find our service.exe or security service.exe. And yes, here it is. Okay, so based on the information that we've culminated, at this point, we can assume that security service.exe is going to be started from this location when booting up Windows 10. My approach is going to generate some malware with MSF Venom, upload it, and replace security service.exe with my malicious file of the same name. At the same time, we're going to be running a Metasploit listener so we can get a reverse shell back with administrative privileges. So first step, we're going to go back to our Kali Linux local VM. All right, I'm in my home directory now and I have this MSF Venom command. So I have a payload that is for Windows with a 64-bit architecture and we have reverse TCP. We have a local host of the IP address of Kali Linux local port of 4445. We're going to format that in exe. And we have the name of security service.exe. We want to replace that legitimate service with this malicious service. Let's just make sure real quick that we are not using port 4445. So all I have to do for that is background the service and show options. Okay. So we're using a port 4444 for this Metasploit exploit module. So we're good. We can use the port that we just utilized in our MSF Venom command. I'm just gonna go back to our session and back here, hit enter. We're going to generate our malicious executable. Done. Okay, with the upload command, we're going to upload security service.exe to the dumb user directory. Very good. Now let's switch over to a Windows shell, and we're going to delete the legitimate security service.exe file. For that, I'm going to use the Windows command line. Okay, so that did not work. Must be because the process is still running. So let's try moving the file instead. I'm going to try to move a file from our directory to the legitimate service directory. Try to overwrite it. We want to overwrite. Yes. Access is denied. Okay. Still didn't work. This is not looking good. Let me try to instead rename the service. So I have a ren command. I have the file path of the legitimate service. And then I'm going to rename it to security service zz.exe. Okay. So that did not give us an error. That's a good thing. Let me just take a look real quick in this directory, make sure that it is actually renamed. Oh, I tried to LS. I'm not in Meterpreter shell anymore. That is not going to work. So we're going to use the dir command. All right. There we go. As you can see here, it was successfully renamed. Now we can simply move the malicious file into this directory going to paste in this move command. As you can see here, I have the malicious binary or executable here, and I'm going to move it into the file path for PC protect and name it security service.exe. Good. 
Now let's set up a Metasploit listener for when the malicious executable is executed. It's not gonna happen until we reboot the system. So I'm just gonna make another tab, MSF console, and we are going to set up a multi-handler. So use multi forward slash handler, set L host of the IP address of Kali Linux, set L port of 4445, that's what we specified in the MSF Venom command, and set the payload to the same payload we specified in the MSF Venom command. So Windows 64 bit, interpreter, reverse TCP. Let's run that. It's now actively listening for a connection. Now back to our Windows machine, we're going to type in shutdown forward slash R to restart it. Go ahead and check to make sure. Yep, so that command is shutting it down. It takes a little bit, but it's going to work. Okay, as you can see here, we have our interpreter session. Yeah, we have system level privileges, but I've noticed that it dies pretty quickly, about one minute. So we only have one minute to do whatever we want to do. I'm going to try to figure out how to establish a persistent connection so we do not lose this. See, right there, I've tried about six times and every time it dies at about 30 seconds or one minute. So we're going to have to figure out a solution to that. Okay, I've restarted it, being the Windows 10 machine, and I'm going to run this post-exploitation module, which is going to migrate to another process, and hopefully that's going to maintain persistence with this interpreter shell. So as you can see here, we've spawned a notepad.exe, and we've migrated to it successfully. So now we should be okay. is very useful because it was dying every 30 seconds, six times in a row. It was not reliable. Now we have a reliable interpreter shell. So that portion of this lecture is complete. Now I'm gonna show you a collection of Python scripts to accomplish the same goal of exploiting the FTP shell vulnerability. So I have a collection of Python scripts called Exploits and Security Tools Framework. I have it installed here on the Kali box that is included in this lecture or included in this course. And here it is, just change directory to east and we're going to type in python start.py that'll allow us to access it over a web browser. So just loopback address, there we go. You should see this screen and I'm going to type in FTP. That'll give us access to this exploit, which is what we want. Okay, we're going to use a listener reverse shell using port 4444 and callback IP, Kali Linux IP, click run. All right, so now this is just the malicious FTP server waiting for a connection from our Windows box. So switch over to your Windows box and send a connection request to your Kali Linux box, same as we did before. So here we are in our Windows box. It's gonna open up, type in the IP address of Kali Linux and press enter. You see here, we got the malicious payload. I'm just gonna toss that over here. And what I see here is an interactive shell right here in the web browser. Just type in who am I? There we go. We're currently interacting with the dumb user account and that's pretty much how it goes. So we could do the same thing here, exactly what we just did. You know, you know how to escalate privileges at this point. This is just to show you a different way of how to exploit that FTP shell, FTP shell remote command execution.